Our scripture reading today is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 17. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light." For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue our sermon series, Do Not Be Deceived. This is the last sermon uh, from this series. And uh, this deception thing, lies thing, um, is very important because this is how the book of Genesis begins. We can see that God's creation is good, and there is no death, there is no sickness, there is no evil. And then all of a sudden we see the devil, we see the serpent that deceives uh, Eve and then Adam. And it starts all with the serpent or the devil challenging the character of God and the nature of God. So basically the serpent is able to deceive Eve that there is something out there, something good for you, that God, who is not so good as he looks, 
wants he wants to deprive you of that. He wants to prevent you from enjoying those good things. So this is what the serpent says. Basically saying that the character of God is not good, that God is evil. And this is a lie. And we see that first comes a lie and then comes death as a result of that lie. We can see that all kind of violence, all kind of sickness, disease, death are the result of that lie. We see that in the New Testament, Jesus also warns us that there would be false prophets, false teachers. There will be a lot of deceptions, a lot of lie or lies around us. And we, we can experience that every day today. So we can see some big lies, evident lies, and we can see some small, subtle lies that you don't really understand that it's a lie, but when you look a little bit closer, you see, yeah, that is coming from, from the serpent, that is coming from the devil. So in our today's uh, scripture reading, Ephesians chapter 5, in verse uh, 6, the Apostle Paul says, let no one deceive you with empty words. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Is it easy to deceive us with empty words? Well, depends. What if everybody believes that or many people believe a certain lie that maybe we can think, okay, they cannot be all... Uh, crazy. They cannot all be wrong. So maybe I should also do this. Maybe I also should have the same kind of beliefs. So let no one deceive you with empty words. So we need to understand that in this section of the letter to Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is talking about the spiritual transformation that happens to a Christian. He says, well, guys, you were like this in the past. You didn't know Christ. Now you're Christians. You are different. You have been transformed. And at the end of chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5, he talks about that transformation. He basically says, now when you learn the truth from Jesus, you, you know the truth. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Why they are empty? Well, they are empty for God because they, uh, they do not contain truth. They may not look empty to us. These empty words in reality may, think, may look very meaningful to us. We may think it makes sense. They are not empty. But when you unpack when you uh, dissect, when you uh, analyze, you know, those, those words in the light of, of uh, the word of God, in the light of eternity, in the light of the truth, you start realizing, now, yeah, they are kind of empty. They do not make much sense. So in the same scripture reading that we read today, uh, verse 8, uh, Paul says again, so he repeats it several times in this section. He says, for at one time you were darkness. You were darkness at one time. And he basically says that the entire world, which is our natural state to rebel against God, to uh, do certain things that are against God's design and God's purpose for this world and God's plan. So we, we, we can do those things if we don't know the truth, if we don't know Jesus. And everybody does that. And that is called in the scriptures darkness. And again, it doesn't look like darkness to us. It may look like it makes sense. It's kind of light. Well, maybe it's not the true light, maybe it's, uh, you know, artificial light, but it still looks to us as light. 
So we need to be born again spiritually. We need to be able to discern spiritual things to say, oh, no, no, no. It looks like light, but in reality it's darkness. And this is what Paul says. For at one time you were darkness. So didn't they have families? Didn't they have jobs before? They had jobs. They had families. They were good citizens. And still they are called darkness. Well, what kind of darkness is that? Spiritual darkness. But now, now when you know Christ, when you know the truth, you are light in the Lord. It's not because you are better. It's not because you are inherently, inherently good. No, no, no. It's because that you are now in the Lord. You, you know the Lord, so that you know the truth. That is why you are light. And then he invites us to walk, and, and he uses this word walk, walk. He means live, live as children of light. Now, if the world around us, with its institutions, experts, psychologists, doctors, advisors, counselors, is darkness. If it's darkness, so what it means to walk as children of light? Well, there would be friction. There would be conflict of ideas and ideologies and approaches and values. And we need to know about those conflicts. And we need to know that we as Christians, we will always be different from the world. Now we need to learn what it means to be a children to be a child of light. What it means to be children of light. That's a very good question for all of us. Because today if you think about the gospel and when we do evangelism, so there is very simplified and I would say wrong approach when you say well believe in Jesus and then you will find peace and you will find joy and you will get a good job and you will get a good spouse and your family will be healthy and everything will be fine so this is this is not true gospel true gospel is not about your earthly blessings it's about knowing the truth having relationship with god no matter what you may be sick you may be poor, you may be persecuted, and still you are righteous and you are holy because you know Jesus. Walk as children of light. If you want to have success, if you want to have success and be prosperous and be like number one in everything, uh, sports, uh, career, family, and everything. You don't even need Jesus, I think, <clears throat> for that. Because we can see how the devil was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. We remember that scene. And he says, well, worship me and I will give you all the kingdoms. I will give you all the success you want to have. You will have that success. But there is no, there is no eternal life in that. This success that the devil can give you is temporary. And we can see that there are so many people who are not Christians, they don't believe in God, they believe in themselves, and they are successful. They have money, they, have, they are worth millions, and everything goes well in their lives, and they go on nice vacations, and they have stuff. Well, we cannot use Jesus and we cannot look at Jesus as a way to give us um, wealth and health and uh, safety in this world only. So it's, 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 it's about something else. Actually, he said that we will be hated. He said that we will be persecuted. He didn't promise nice, good life. But he gives us something more. He gives us um, 
this supernatural, supernatural peace and supernatural joy, and he gives us the promise of eternal life. So if we do not follow him, we will perish. We live here on our planet 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, and then we die. So what's next? If you are not with Jesus, well, there is no eternity for you, right? Actually, there is eternal hell, but there is no eternity with God for you. And, and, and vice versa. If you know Jesus, then you are in eternal bliss and happiness. You are in his presence forever. And that is amazing. We need to understand that about God. Otherwise, if we expect him to serve us his on this planet only, then we can be deceived and mistaken. So, in our today's text, Paul says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. And he's talking about the crucifixion here, his death on the cross, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now, those of you who study the book of Leviticus of Mo on Monday, so you understand what it means, fragrant offering and the sacrifice to God. So it's something pleasant and it's something that pays for our sins, right? Fragrant offering. Something that reconciles us with God, that pays for our sins. This is what Jesus does for us. And this happens, this is a spiritual thing. This is not physical or material thing. And then Paul says, well, now you're children of God. And then he says, but sexual immorality, and he already spoke about sexual immorality in chapter 4, and he repeats it again in chapter 5. He says, sexual immorality, all impurity, or covetousness, or in other words, we can say greed, must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. So it's interesting how we are called with you. We are saints. You, me, uh, everyone who believes in Jesus is a saint. So saints uh, should be like Jesus, should be children of light, should walk in love and in light, and uh, they should not be deceived. So now how can you deceive a child of light? How, how can you deceive a child of light who is a Christian? So you teach this child of light to walk in the ways of darkness. This is how you deceive. And who is working 24-7 to do that? Well, the devil and his demons, right? The world and our sinful nature. So that is why Paul says, well, do not be deceived. Think clearly. Think clearly. Be able to discern what is right, what is wrong. Say, he lists several things. And, and you think, why these things? Sexual immorality, all impurity, covetousness, uh, must not even named among you. And you know, as I was getting ready for this uh, sermon, I was, uh, I was uh, just checking uh, on the topics pastors preach here nowadays in this country, and uh, not so many pastors like to preach on sexual immorality, well, why? Because uh, this is what many Christians practice. Sexual immorality, it starts with, uh, it can be pornography, it can be adultery, it can be uh, sex before marriage, uh, it can be homosexuality. Uh, all those things, they fall under the umbrella of uh, sexual immorality. So, and when you think about Christians, are they deceived? Uh, in, the, in these areas? Yeah, they are. So many people think it's okay, it's not a problem to practice sexual immorality in any form or kind. Well, but uh, you see, must not even be named among you. This is what Paul says. So now when we practice it silently, and I'm thinking about how the world teaches us to do that. <clears throat> Say, you know, this idea, uh, kind of like logical idea, from one, uh, from one approach, one, if you look at this in one way, logical idea, you graduate from school, 
you get your education, you get your career, uh, you save up enough money, maybe you buy a house, and then you get married. And now you're 30, or maybe 35. So, uh, what about, uh, are you an angel? No, you are not. Do you have all kinds of desires, including sexual desires. What do you do, you know, over the 15 years or 17 years from the moment you started becoming an adult and that time? So, this is time to be tempted in various ways in terms of sexual immorality. And it's not even supposed to be named among us. So, what would be a solution to that? Well, one solution probably would be to get married as early as you can. But this is not the world teaches us. It says, well, first you need to have money. You have to have a career. So now we have all these conflicting ideas. And then we read this, but sexual immorality and all impurity uh, must not even be named among you. And uh, what do we do with this? What do we do with these things? Now, another thing, it says covetousness or greed. Well, it's desire to have stuff. And Paul later will say, well, it's idolatry because now you're worshipping stuff. You're worshipping money. You're worshipping houses. You're worshipping cabins. cabins you're worshipping boats. You're worshipping vacations. You're worshipping stuff, right? So that is also is not good. Because it's idolatry. What do we do with that? So now, if I'm a child of light, and I have this darkness that's tempting me, okay, how do I remain the child of light? How? how, how? That's a good question. I need supernatural help from the Lord, right? That's almost impossible to fight on my own. So I need the help, the supernatural help of the Holy Spirit this light in me that helps me to be sober at all times and to be able to discern what is right, what is truth, and what is a lie. Okay, let us continue. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking. And we do that all the time. Filthiness, foolish talk, crude joking. You know, I found myself... <clears throat> um, how to put it? Um, just to give you uh, an example. So I know that we jokingly can use, uh, you know, uh, people would use image of poop, you know, f on a cake or something, birthday cake or something, and they would just joke about this. And I was thinking, like, if I'm invited to such an event and I have to pray over such a cake, how would I pray over a cake that has poop on it or something image. So, and I'm thinking, okay, so is it filthiness? Is it foolish talk? Is it crude joking? What is this? It's, it's a joke. I understand. It's a joke. But how do I reconcile, you know, being a child of light with this kind of jokes, right? That is a very good question, you know, that we need to ask ourselves how we joke, right? So, what we say. And, and let there be no all those things. This is what he says, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, you know, to the Lord. That should be, you know, reverence. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Okay? I don't know what to do with this. What do we do with this? Has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. So, which means, okay, so if it is true that Jesus is the Lord and he is God, I better be listening to him, what he has to say about my life. And if the devil tells me, no, do you remember that dialogue with the serpent in the, in the Garden of Eden? But Eve says he, 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 she, wants, she wants this fruit, but, but she knows that God says, you will die. But the serpent says, no, you will not die. That's fine, just go for it. 
And, and the world tells us the same. Well, here we see that the word of God says, no, 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 this is darkness. You don't need that. This is not your lifestyle. This is not how you should think, talk, act. This is not for you. You are now a child of light. And we say, okay, but everybody does that. I don't see any harm in that. Well, it's just physical, just physical stuff, you know. It's not much danger. So, and then the serpent says, the devil says to us, whispering into our ears, you will not die. It's not a problem. But who shall I listen to? Shall I listen to the word of God or shall I listen to other Christians or who, who, who believe that it's okay or, you know, the world that believes it's okay? That's, that's a good question to ask ourselves. That's a good question. Let no one deceive you with uh, empty words. Because some may say, well, it's okay, it's fine. That's not a big deal. So, but the Bible calls it empty words, empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Wow. That's it's not a joke. It's not a small thing, right? So it's something, yeah, important. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And then he gives us a lot of information. He, he, I, I don't know, you know, the, the Holy Spirit uses the Apostle Paul in various ways to kind of make sure that we understand that it stays in our mind. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern, try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Try to discern. Are we trying to discern what is pleasing to the Lord? Or are we just, hey, jokingly, uh, having fun, you know, go along the way the world goes and we just do the same. Are we discerning as Christians? That's a good question to ask ourselves. Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Well, what is pleasing to the Lord? Take no part in the, in the unfruitful works of darkness. Well, there are some works of darkness, but there is no fruit that pleases God. But instead, expose them. Expose them. Okay, so you, we need to say, well, this is not good. This is not right. This is not true. Not good, not right, not true. Just expose for yourself, for your family, in that area where you are. Just, just tell the truth. Bring light into that place. They may not like you for that, but this is what we are called to do. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. Especially today, especially with sexual immorality, right? But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And this is right. This is true. This is how we need to make sure that we are spiritually, you know, awake and that we are in the light. So we, we may have desires and thoughts and actions that are not pleasing the Lord. But then we bring it into the light by repenting. We just say, well, Jesus, I have this desire or I have this kind of tendency or thoughts or concerns or I don't know. This is how I act. This is, but, 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 but this is not what pleases you. So now, rather than hiding this and saying, it's okay, it's fine, eh, not a big deal. You bring all that stuff, you open your heart and you bring it into the light before the Lord. You bring it to the light and you repent. You say, here, Jesus. This is who I am, what I have in my heart. And then 
the light of God shines on that stuff. And all these creatures, all these lizards and snakes and spiders of uncleanliness, they run away from your heart. They run away. And now your heart is clean. And the light of the Lord lives in your heart. Okay? And now you no longer... No longer have those desires. Now you want to do only what is true, what is right, what is good. And on the contrary, if you allow, allow all the dark stuff to get into your heart and into your mind, so now, unfortunately, there is very little light. And, but there is a lot of darkness, all kind of like dark things. And they may take over us. They may start dominating our desires and behaviors and thoughts and, you know, how we live our lives. So this is the opposite of being in the light. Okay, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. And this is a line from an ancient, you know, an ancient Christian hymn. That, that, that is just amazing. This is one of the early hymns. And this is a line from that hymn. Now, in, uh, in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was challenging the good character of God. The remedy for us not to fall prey of the serpent is to trust God, that he is good, that he is loving, that he is, knows what is best for us. And if he says no sexual immorality, no crude joking, but thanksgiving, well, we trust him. We trust him. We obey him. We know that it's not that he wants to kill all the fun in our life. Oh, so you just kill the all the fun in my life. That is so fun. And now God wants to make my life boring. No, no, no. He knows what is better for me. He knows what is good, what is right, what is true. And I trust him. So we all, you, me, all of us, we are like that Eve to whom the serpent is talking all the time. All the time, the serpent is talking to us through the mouth of books, songs, movies, Friends, we call it culture, right? Culture. This is what the culture tells us, what is good, what is right. And there is also this voice of Jesus. And he says that his sheep know his voice. And then he is telling what is true, what is right, what is good. And may the Lord, may the Lord help us to listen to the voice of our shepherd, to the vo voice of Jesus. And with serpent, we just say, out. I'm not listening to you any longer. And we do that because we want to please the Lord. We want to be his children. Paul says, look carefully in verse 15, then how you walk, how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. And unwise is stupid, right? So, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, conclusion. We will conclude with the first verses of this chapter. Therefore, the Apostle Paul teaches us, Therefore, because we are no longer darkness, because we are now children of light, therefore, be imitators of God. Well, be like God. Be like God as beloved children. Because now we are his children. He adopted us through Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus dies on the cross. He pays for our sins. He reconciles us with God the Father. And now... We are adopted by him. We are his children. As beloved children. And walk in love. 
as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we are not supposed just to do good works and be good people and do what is true, right, and uh, good just because we have to do that, because it's the law. We are doing all that because we love Jesus, because we love him, because he loved us first. This is what Apostle John says in his first epistle. He says, we love because he first loved us. So you see, what we think is okay, the darkness of this world, well, Jesus had to die on the cross to cleanse us from all that darkness. This mass that is in the world, I mean, it just leads to eternal damnation, right? It's, it's a mess. There is nothing good in that. Now, that is why Jesus had to die on the cross. And he died on the cross to liberate us from this mess. And he showed his love to us. And now we love him. And because we love him, not because he says, well, if you don't do this, I will punish you. But because we love him, we want to be like him. And we want to do what pleases him. Because we love him, because we are his children. He is our brother. We have the same father, heavenly father. How can it we love Jesus? He's so amazing. He's so amazing. What he has done, nobody could do that for us. Only he could have done that for us. Now in the light of that, in the light of his great love and mercy and, you know, grace in in the light of his death in the light of his death and resurrection in the light of all the spiritual blessings that we have in him do we still want to follow the darkness of this world or do we want to truly be children of light and live as children of light well may the lord help us not to be deceived let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for what you have done for us on the cross, for your death, for your resurrection, for the forgiveness of sins, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for adopting us, for the fact that you adopted us and made us your children, the children of light. Yeah, we were children of darkness. Now we are children of light. Jesus, we need your supernatural help, the help of your Holy Spirit, so that we can stay, remain the children of light and walk, talk, think, act, make choices as children of light, as your children, Jesus. May your name be glorified and magnified. Praise be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.